Hi all, I have another absolutely fascinating game in the modern defence to show you. So one of the greatest exponents of the modern defence was Raymond Keane. This is back in the Lloyds Bat Masters 1981, this game, which was a tournament that Raymond Keane actually won. To me, this was, uh, when I was growing up, the Lloyds Bat Masters were the most prestigious uh, events going. You had lots and lots of 2500s from places uh, in the old USSR coming over untitled you know basically you know I am strength above and I picked up a lot of tips and ideas uh, just just from conversations and how the British players reacted to uh, some of the uh, styles uh, it, it became quite evident for example that um, uh, you know the idea of reducing counterplay not not giving any counterplay was was a key concept in general so it's like a whole new it's like a, a cultural clash between British chess and, and Russian chess you could see stark differences in play and I even got to see in real life uh, the knights of Vasily Smyslov uh, and David Bronstein and my good friend Paul Georgiou in one of the Lloyds Bat Masters beat David Bronstein so fantastic series of events organized by Lloyds Bank um, and as you may know, I won the Lloyds Bank Junior under 18 in 1989 as well. They were organising lots and lots of tournaments at the time. But this, 1981, Raymond Keane playing with the black pieces against John L. Arnason, who uh, is a strong grandmaster. So E4, we see G6, so the modern being used on this occasion. And Raymond Keane used it four times in this event with the black pieces. Uh, so he did very well, actually, with it. Uh, so D4, we have Bishop G7, Knight C3 d6 so not committing this knight just yet just leaving it there for the moment f4 and one of raymond Keane's favorite moves just knight c6 so a bit of a teasing move and we have here a critical test bishop e3 not knight f3 on d5 you might ask it seems as though black can play knight d4 for example this position the knight can be reinforced and even here queen b6 and this in fact, engines suggest here the move f5. And this looks rather interesting. For example, knight a4 check, taking on e2, uh, torturing that knight. And black's going to be doing very well there, as an example. So yeah, d5, knight d4 is plausible here. Uh, so we have bishop e3, knight f6, h3. And it looks as though white's playing very aggressively here not just uh, securing the use of the g4 square but playing actually g4 immediately now we have e5 uh, and this does ask for what seems to be a very very dangerous squishing idea now after d takes d takes the move f5 and this should ring along alarm bells if you're playing the black pieces because uh squishing the swift g5 and f6 is on the cards here uh, this is reacted to here with g takes f5. It seems as though knight d4 might be plausible. There's a very, very interesting uh, engine idea here after g5. I wonder if you can guess what engines think might give black equality in this position. Quite a fascinating idea. If I give you five seconds to pause the video. It, it seems as though knight takes e4 might actually be plausible. This knight sack immediately for two pawns and then taking here f5 with the king still in the center white doesn't want to uh, play g takes and now here queen e7 and this seems to be offering black uh, a very very interesting position for example bishop takes the key move rook a d8 stronger than e takes d4 this position should be about equal the center is now being uh, has now been occupied by black and has compensation strong compensation it's important uh, it seems technically you know not to play this instead because then the pawns are not so uh, dangerous white's got a light square grip there's resources um, for white here it looks it's still quite dangerous the peace sack but uh, so anyway these possibilities could be triggered by knight d4 inviting g5 for knight takes e4 instead we see g takes f5 e takes f5 which means this bishop could be very useful on the diagonal knight d4 here bishop g2 queen e7 queen d2 
Uh, here, if knight g e2, rook d8, that should be uh, this should this should be okay. It should be about even. So queen d2, we have rook d8, queen f2. So safeguarding c2, getting out of uh, any dangers. That's a, a nice spot for the queen, it seems. H6 is played. This is quite dangerous for black, this position. Uh, if h5, this is a really uh, um, dangerous looking position. Uh, this piece sack here is not entirely <laughs> convincing uh, because white is going to make use of this g-file and is ready for a big attack. Uh, for example, this sequence, uh, a very, very tactical sequence. White can uh, hold the forts, and that g-file is a great great thing to use. So very, very interesting, but uh, h6 was played, which seems the most sensible against g5 right now. White consoles queenside, c5, knight ge2. At this point here, it seems as though white, intuitively, you could argue white's got great prospects of breaking open the g-file, playing g5. And this looks um, a little bit as if it might be too slow. It's like it's a long distant dream to even open up a file here. And this bishop seems a long distant dream to ever use here. Um, so it seems in the meantime, this g file and g5 looks menacing. Uh, so intriguing. Uh, so knight g3, and we have plodding on with a4. And now g5 comes. It looks as though yeah, white's uh, played this perfectly. In many respects, um, so g5, uh, but maybe a3 is interesting, just putting a halt on that. And if it causes black to have to spend more time to try and open up even a single line. Here, g5, this position, uh, knight h5, this position uh, is testing black. And uh, with this uh, forcing style sequence, uh, it looks as though white should be absolutely doing fantastically. So a3 is, is an interesting caution move against a4. It wasn't played. If we just inspect this variation again, and so knight h5, and uh, here, um, we ha we we showed uh, queen queen d6 takes takes knight e4 check um, if king b2 here uh, again uh, it looks a little only a little bit scary uh, for the white king it's you know black's uh, king looks a lot worse so it's it's very very interesting that um, th this is a critical position it looks as though this was highly ambitious, but maybe it should be stopped in the tr in the tracks. This a pawn, so g5 was played instead, and we have hg bishop takes now a nasty looking relative pin, not an absolute pin, but a relative pin, and here actually a3 is played uh, by black, and so the dream of liberating the bishop and weakening the dark squares has been kept alive. But uh, isn't there an important technicality to be concerned with here? Okay, it's like the form pawn on a3. But this important technicality here. Um, well, in this position, knight d5 was played. Before we have a look at that, there's some fascinating variations here with b3. For example, c4, knight d5. With the form pawn here, there is some very exciting stuff going on with knight takes d5 a queen sack for bishop h6 check and here knight c3 check knight takes d1 <laughs> uh, knight takes b3 check oh this is crazy this is crazy looking at d1 here so rook takes d1 c takes b3 check rook d2 check and black would have a big advantage so that's an absolutely crazy uh, line <laughs> here just have a look at this again so a queen sack line uh, here instead if uh, rook d2 then knight c3 this position 
uh, is also very very interesting with a2 there knight b1 threatening to queen and yeah a very very tactical line indeed uh, here where <laughs> yeah it's it's chaos it's total tactical chaos uh, queen e2 uh, let's say this position could end up with uh, black getting the advantage after the smoke clears if instead of queen e2 though uh, queen takes e3 then there's d1 promoting to a knight and again uh, this this position here it should be about even actually so yeah there's great complexities going on uh, if instead of bishop takes d1 if king takes then black's going to be getting the better of it after the smoke clears so it's really fascinating uh events occur with b3 in a nutshell b3 and c4 it's fascinating stuff this idea of this queen sack here because of the form pawn just look at the, this position just to take it in for a moment so using this diagonal and uh, playing knight c3 check this is the critical line it's it's wonderful stuff it shows the great dynamics in the position but anyway let's not carry get carried away <laughs> too much so in the game knight d5 was played now is this bishop a pipe dream on the diagonal okay there's a dangerous form pawn trying to undermine at least the dark squares as well well black plays a takes b2 check king b1 and this does represent a fracture of these pawns as well which in turn uh, lowers in my view king safety when you have such fractures around the king instead of a solid pawn chain i think that's one indicator for reduced king safety uh, so here in this position uh guess what uh, raymond king plays in this critical position so i think he's already succeeded with this plan uh, this structural damage could have been prevented if i had played a3 and just took certain different downsides instead but this is the situation so black to play here if I give you five seconds to pause the video what would you play in this position okay rook takes d5 yes an exchange sack we have bishop takes f6 uh, on bishop takes d5 queen d6 this position with b5 c4 is a, a big advantage for black and if we look at this again um, if instead bishop takes b5 because of that pin the knight that's possible it seems queen b6 queen a5 uh, here this is uh, a very interesting position which ends up <laughs> why getting made it <laughs> yeah so yeah there's there's some fascinating stuff with um, uh, bishop takes d5 instead but uh, we have bishop takes f6 queen takes f6 and this might actually represent a mistake this seemingly natural uh, recapture it seems as though instead of queen takes f6 queen d7 was plausible remember we do have these fractured pawns to play with especially a2 this this highlights that possibly uh, you know rook a2 or queen a4 is on the cards uh, here if bishop takes d5 for example queen takes looking at queen takes a2 uh, so this position uh, looks as though black's doing great actually so yeah queen d7 seems to be a, an interesting move if bishop takes g7 then queen a4 and yes the fractured pawns are representing reduced king safety it's very difficult to defend a2 here uh, and here okay yes it does defend a2 c4 and then we're back to a2 being punished and here this is just mating so a fascinating uh, tactical shot here is possible it seems queen d7 absolutely fascinating but queen takes f6 was played bishop takes Queen a6, c3, c4 blunting that bishop, so renewing queen a2. Queen takes b2, protecting a2. Knight takes f5, was played now. And white played knight takes f5. Believe it or not, this is actually a crucial moment for white in this game. Knight takes f5 seems to help 
black considerably here. Uh, there's a very, very technical move which would have kept the white king as snug as a bug, basically. Bishop e4. And you might think, well, hold on a sec. This knight's hanging. <laughs> That's not possible. The bishop, crucially, controls an escape square and unveils the rook for rook d8 and doesn't let black anywhere near this diagonal. If uh, knight d6, then the bishop goes back to c2, white controls the diagonal and has got the advantage. Uh, so the crucial test, uh, you might think, well, take the knight. The thing is, now there's rook the 8 check, and there's only one move for black, bishop f8. And now we use this pin, so we've got two pins, absolute pins. And uh, if bishop f5 here, this is rather desperate, <laughs> uh, rook takes g3 check, and with two pieces hanging for white, White plays the forcing, Rook takes f8 check to resolve this and be a piece up with a big advantage. So yeah, there's a, there's a crucial position here where Bishop e4, the move Bishop e4, uh, could have saved White, it seems, and has had the advantage. Fascinating stuff. Uh, so anyway, Knight takes f5 was played, not Bishop e4. Bishop takes f5 check, and all of a sudden, uh, this Bishop is significant now after e4. It's, this is really quite a dangerous bishop now. Uh, we have rook hg1, bishop g6, so unpinning this bishop, crucially unpinning. And importantly, the, the queen on a6 supports the bishop, so there's no rook g6 or anything. Rook g4, and we have e3, and now you see that both bishops being kind of liberated. And it looks as though the white king is in a firing line of some sort, you might suspect, and you'd be right. White played rook takes c4. If rook dg1, there's a spectacular move here. What would black play to win here spectacularly if I give you five seconds to pause the video? Okay. We have some escape squares covered. And there's actually queen takes a2 check. And bishop takes c3 as checkmate. So yeah, this is not just winning a pawn. It's safeguarding the king. Rook takes c4. But we have a runaway past pawn now. As Nimzovich would say, a criminal that should have, should have been kept under lock and key. Uh, so that's supported. White took here. e2. Rook e1. And now another spectacular bolt from the blue. Okay. Black to play. If I give you five seconds to pause the video here. Okay, Black's dynamism has really been unveiled from earlier when it didn't seem entirely convincing. But here, Queen takes c4, Queen sack here, Bishop takes c3 check. There's only Queen b2. Bishop takes e1, and this pawn's just ready to uh, to be devastating. We have um, Bishop takes e2, and can you see Black's idea here? If I give you five seconds, what would you play in this position? Bishop g3. This bishop is going to deliver the killer blow. Bishop e5. That modern defense Piancato bishop from earlier. There's nothing to stop. Bishop e5. The game ended here. If bishop d1, bishop e5, pinning the queen. And that's it. That's going to be winning totally on material. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> So yeah, it's it was a really fascinating uh, win, I thought, with the black pieces in a really prestigious tournament at the time for me. These were my, my favourite tournaments to enter, the Lloyds Bank Masters. And uh, 1981, Raymond Keane played fantastically with the black pieces, with the modern defence in four key games. And this was one of those four key games. So I hope you got something from this. And if you're inspired to check out or experiment with the modern defense uh, then check out King's Crusher TV slash modern defense there's the full-blown course there modern dash defense or there's a free short and sweet course uh, to check out uh, King's Crusher TV slash modern okay thanks very much